Welcome back to Wildly Wonderful. I'm Katie McKinley, and together we are going to cut, sew, hem, press, and twirl away in a new Voyager skirt, the free pattern that just released on wildandwonderful.com. The Voyager skirt is a full circle skirt drafted for woven or non-stretch fabrics and is available in both adult sizes extra extra small through plus 3x and youth sizes 2 through 14. I don't always have a zipper on hand or want to sew with one but I want to sew with a woven fabric so this pattern helps skip the need for zippers with an easy to sew elastic and closed waistband. For the Voyager skirt you will want to pick your size based upon your hip measurement. If your waist falls into a smaller size, you can personalize your elastic measurement to get the perfect fit. Let's get started. So there are really three pattern pieces that you need for this to make this skirt. It is a full circle skirt, so it is a bit of a fabric hog, but it's done with woven fabrics. I have the yardage for both apparel, where they're the wider fabrics, like 54 inches and wider, and for um, like a quilting cotton. So you can choose to use either or because I think this type of skirt looks adorable in both types of like drapey fabrics or more of a stiffer like quilting cotton. Um, you're gonna need your pocket piece, your waistband piece. Just note that I'm making a youth skirt right now, a size seven, and it um, the waistband for those sizes are cut on the fold the waistband for the adult sizes are cut with two pieces that we end up sewing together. So not on the fold, but that's something to put into your memory bank. And then we've got this um, full skirt piece and I did cut, I print this out on my wide format printer. So mine is just one, but if yours piece together or you use, you know, a uh, projector that works too. So, I'm going to be showing you adding pockets to this skirt. So it is a little bit more of a step than just if you're doing the skirt itself. Um, you can see here is this whole, it literally is half of a circle. <laughs> can you see that? Yeah, the whole thing's in there. And this is our waist opening and then of course our hemline. And so we're gonna be adding pockets to both sides of both skirt pieces. I have the chart for the um, the pocket placement on the pattern itself for the different size skirts. So this is two inches lower and I'm going to go with the pocket right sides down and the skirt right side up. So the pattern pieces are facing each other. And we're just going to add a couple clips and I'm gonna go ahead and do it on the other side right now so we can go to our machine and do it all at once. So here's that side seam. Here's our second pocket, two inches down, right sides together. And we're going to add a couple clips. And this whole pattern has a half inch seam allowance. So we're gonna be sewing a half inch seam allowance here and a half inch seam allowance here. Now we are going to do this for every seam, or at least I am. So I promise I won't talk about it every time I bring my fabric back to the table here but because this is a woven fabric it does fray and um you will want to just for professional finishing you don't have to but you can uh, finish your edges i like to do it with a serger so i run a stitch with the regular sewing machine and then i finish the edges with a serger and then that way when you look at the inside of this when we're all done it's going to be completely finished it won't fray when it's in the wash and if you do ask why we have to do both, it's because um, a serger is built with a stretch stitch in it and woven fabrics don't have that stretch indicator. So when you start to pull on these uh, seams, if you don't have a basic 
um, sewing machine stitch, just a straight stitch to lock those into it, you will experience some of your fabric ripping, your seams will come undone, and it won't be as big of a deal, I guess, on a skirt because these aren't going to be stressed out seams. But at the same time, why would you make something just so it falls apart later? So do it right the first time and uh, you won't have to worry about it. So what you can do, completely optional, but if you want to press the skirt away from the body of the fabric like this and run an edge stitch right along this pocket, you can, and it'll help keep the pockets inside. And like when you're wearing the skirt, it won't pull out as much. Um, I tend to not do it that often. It just depends on the fabric. I think I might just leave this alone. But there's that, and we're gonna repeat the exact same process with the other skirt piece. So we're going to put our pockets right sides together with our skirt edge. Whoop. <laughs> My fabric is moving. Here we go. And on the other side, And we're gonna run over to the machine and sew both of these seams. We've sewn both the front and the back piece of our skirt to have the pockets on it. And again, if you don't wanna add pockets, you just skip that step and the rest of it is pretty much the exact same. We are going to lay right sides together the two skirt pieces. So the front and the back, they're identical right now, so kinda doesn't matter. And we're gonna line up all of our seams, specifically just these two outer edges. That's what we're going to be sewing together. So right now, using a half inch seam allowance, we're going to be sewing down, starting at the waist opening, down. We make sure we get half inch into this pocket piece. We're going all the way around, make sure we get half inch up into this, and then down to the bottom seam. Start on this side, the same thing. Zoop, all the way around, and then all the way down. We've got our skirt completely sewn now. Pretty exciting. And so um, you can see, again, I sewed with a straight stitch and then used a serger to just finish the edges. That way nothing is frayed and it kind of gives a little more professional finish. I used two different colors so you could see a little bit better. <laughs> um, but you also want to come all the way down into this seam for the pocket and then go out because that way you're securing these stitches as much as you can and you're not going to get rips in those corner edges as easily. Before we put this away or put it aside so we can start working on the waistband, um, let's go ahead and mark our quarter points for our skirt. So we've already got the side quarter points marked and you can put clips on them if you want to. I'm gonna leave them off because it's easy to recognize. You just match them up and then put a pin or a clip on the other two points and then when we go to put our waistband piece on, we have easy points to, uh, you know, use. So there's that. We are going to now fire up our iron. I know, the dreaded iron for sewing. <laughs> and um, with your waistband piece, we are going to be putting it with the right side facing down if this is the adult piece, you're gonna want to join one of the long edges, or sorry, short edges together, so we have just one piece right now. And if you have a hem guide, it helps. But while you're ironing, 
we're going to be giving it a memory press of half an inch just along one of the long sides of the waistband. We've got our memory press and all we're going to do is take the waistband piece and fold it right sides together with the short sides meeting and give a couple clips here. Open up that memory press where you did fold it down because we're going to be sewing this entire short edge with a half inch seam allowance. And once you've sewn it, you want to press your press your hems open also. We have it sewn together with half inch. I pressed it open and then I repressed that little half inch memory hem just to get it ready. So now we're going to be marking the quarter points on our waistband and we'll mark it on the side that does not have the memory press. So just keep it folded in half and there, if you use your seam as one quarter point, we can find another on there on the opposite side. And then we just kind of fold it and meet these together and we will mark the points on these other two as well. So we grab our skirt piece, flip that right side out, and we match up our quarter points that we've marked everywhere with the quarter points on our skirt piece. And these are one-to-one, -one, so you won't be needing to stretch everything. Um, there, you know, it is a curve, so you may have to ease it just the slightest bit, but these measurements should be exact. We're just gonna put all of our, and it's going to be with right sides together. So you want the skirt fabric out, and the waistband fabric facing towards the skirt. Here's our final quarter point. So it looks like this. We shift it all down so we can see it a little clearer. And we are going to be sewing along the entire outer edge with a half inch seam allowance. So you just take your straight stitch and go all the way around the outside of that. And just like that, we have our waistband attached. Super exciting. Okay, so the next step I like to use pins for because I find it so much easier. But all that you're going to be doing um, first, actually, let's go ahead and press this waistband seam up into the waistband casing area. That's better. So I like to start at the back middle and all we're going to be doing is folding this in half and meeting that seam line that we created just a second ago when we sewed it down. So, um, I like to use pins for this step in particular, because it's a lot more of a pinning related <laughs> moment. Um, so just go around the entire skirt waist band casing and add pins as we're eventually going to be sewing that down. And like I said, this is a one-to-one -one waistband. There should be no stretching because it all matches up. And then, of course, I grabbed the fabric underneath. It all matches up, and it's going to suck back to your waistband when we add the elastic. And we did that memory press of the half-inch seam allowance originally, so then it tucks in without any effort, which I love. My pens are getting a little dull. I need to sharpen some.
And here we are with our last pin. And so it is, do you see how we have this lovely waistband casing? Now, um, find your middle back, and that's where I like to start from when I sew. And then you'll find that because we have a seam here. And you'll want to leave about a two or three inch opening in this waistband casing when we go to stitch this up because that way we can thread our elastic into it a lot easier. So just remember, sew along the entire bottom edge, but leave an opening here so we can thread. Y'all, we are so close to being done. Can't you taste it? <laughs> <laughs> um, so here we are, our waistband is attached and we are going to be threading some elastic through the waistband here. Now, um, I really recommend customizing your waistband elastic for the person that it's going for. We definitely have a size chart and if you need to blend sizes, like they are a higher, a bigger height or their hips or something is different, but their waist is a little bit smaller. I recommend on this pattern going by your waist measurement, I'm sorry, by your hip measurement because you have to pull this up over your hips. So I would pick the skirt size by your hip measurement and the elastic size by your waist measurement if you need to make any changes. So I like to use this bodkin it is my favorite thing in the whole wide world. I hope you can see it for threading elastic. You can get these at Joanne Fabrics or I found like a 10 pack that I was dishing out to all of my family members <laughs> that were asking about this thing for I think a 10 pack for like $6 on Amazon. And it's really awesome for threading elastic. You just put the elastic into the opening and then tighten it by you know pulling this little guy down. So let's do it. Just make sure your elastic doesn't twist while you're pulling through. That's really the most important part about waistbands. I really like to use this really soft waistband elastic. I just feel like it stretches better and it wears more comfortably on your body. But the problem with it is that it does like to twist and turn, especially like when you're pulling it out of the wash or if you're like pulling it up and over your body, sometimes it flips around, so I'll show you my little trick for using this kind of elastic with a different type. Or, you know, it, it, it's not non-roll. The non-roll elastic, you won't have this issue with. This is just my preferred purchase. So we've got it pulled through. We didn't twist anything. And keeping these, again, untwisted from each other, we're gonna overlap and we're going to stitch these pieces together so we've secured our elastic. So overlap and secure your elastic together. We've closed up our elastic and we're just going to cinch it all back through so it's all completely inside of your waistband casing and um, we're going to close up our waistband opening. So once again, grab a couple of pins and secure those pieces. And we are just going to close it up completely. Whoop. Maybe a little more coordinated than I am. <laughs> there. So we're going to close up our opening. We are completely closed and secured. And my last sneakiest little step for waistband openings, like I said, this elastic can sometimes um, move like when you've washed it, it sometimes rolls and twists. And honestly, twisted elastic is like, for me at least a nightmare. It's not my most, um, <laughs> my most enjoyable thing. So, um, and it's completely optional, but I do think it kind of gives it a little fun added element to it. You can run, pull your, while you're stitching, pull your elastic completely tight and run a straight stitch right down the middle of your waistband casing. And it'll kind of give it a double, it almost looks like you've fed two elastics through it, but it also secure their, this elastic from rolling or moving and it'll keep it 
pretty well um, gathered evenly so it doesn't move around on you. Completely optional, I love doing it. I'm actually gonna go do it right now. And there we are. Literally all I did was run a straight stitch. It won't pop because I pulled the fabric to its highest stretch point, but it kind of gives it like another little element. And once again, if you don't have a non-roll waistband elastic, like it really helps a lot. So, and I think it makes it a little cuter. So the last step is just to hem. And um, there are so many methods for hemming. One for circle skirts, because it's on a curve, if you run a long gathering stitch and pull it as you're hemming up, that's super helpful to keep it straight. Using hem tape is awesome. I like to actually serge the ends and then do a quick roll. So the serged ends is like um, a quarter of an inch. So I don't cut anything off. I just do the raw edge. And so I roll it a quarter of an inch and then another quarter of an inch, and then I stitch it down. And that kind of gives it, you know, more of a solid edge to hem with. And it's just a little bit easier to play with. But again, hemming is completely personal. However you like to get it done the fastest, you could run, um, I mean, you could do a binding on the edge of this. You could use lace on the edge of it. Literally, however you want to finish this is up to you. Ta-da! We are completely hemmed. Oop, here's my pocket. <laughs> and I've pressed the seam and this is a completely twirl ready skirt if I've ever seen one. I'm gonna be sending it to my niece in Texas and I think she's gonna absolutely love it. So I hope you make the cutest skirts ever. I hope you twirl your life away and um, I'm excited to see what everyone has to share. Thanks.